Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is on new research showing interesting effects of coffee and caffeine consumption on brain activity. So we're gonna discuss some new research in this lesson and some of the changes in brain activity and why they may be important. Before we talk about those new findings, let's talk about what coffee is and where it comes from. So coffee is derived from the coffee bean, which is a seed of the coffea plant. So this is what the coffea plant looks like. Coffee contains over 1,000 bioactive compounds. These include, as we know, caffeine, but it also includes important antioxidants and a class of compounds known as diterpenoids. So along with caffeine, coffee has certain important antioxidants known as chlorogenic acid and caffeic acid. Because coffee has so many different bioactive compounds, including caffeine and these important antioxidants, along with many other bioactive compounds, coffee is going to have many different physiological effects. So we know that with caffeine, caffeine enters the brain, it crosses the blood-brain barrier, and it binds to and inhibits particular receptors in the brain, and these are adenosine receptors. So the adenosine receptors A1, A2A, A2B, and A3 are inhibited by caffeine. And what normally happens is that adenosine will bind to these adenosine receptors, leading to a suppression of excitatory neurotransmitter release in the brain. So it causes drowsiness or fatigue. So adenosine is something that builds up in our brains as we go through the day. This is what leads us to feeling fatigued and feeling tired. So adenosine binding to these receptors, again, it's going to cause us to feel fatigued and tired. But if we have caffeine around, caffeine actually inhibits adenosine receptors. It's an adenosine receptor antagonist. So it prevents adenosine from binding to the receptor, leading to increased excitatory neurotransmitters and a feeling of wakefulness. So this is the main effect that we get from coffee and other caffeinated beverages. But as we mentioned before, there's so many other bioactive compounds in coffee that we can see other effects on the brain. And there is new research showing that coffee can have other effects on the brain independent of caffeine. And this comes from the article entitled Coffee Consumption Decreases the Connectivity of the Posterior Default Mode Network at Rest. This was published in June of 2023 in the Frontiers of Behavioral Neuroscience Journal. So in this study, researchers selected 47 habitual coffee drinkers, and habitual in this case means that they drank at least one cup of coffee per day. They ruled out other participants that had mental health issues or who were on psychoactive compounds like cannabinoids. And what they did was they got these individuals to consume coffee or caffeine-infused hot water. They got 30 individuals, more specifically, to drink caffeine-infused hot water. And then what they did was they took two fMRI, or functional magnetic resonance imaging, scans of their brain, one before consumption and one 30 minutes after consumption, to see the changes in brain activity. Before we talk about their findings, we have to discuss the default mode network to better understand what this does. So the default mode network is a pattern of brain activation that occurs during a resting state. This was originally found in patients who were doing fMRI scans for another reason. When the participants were not doing some activity, they found that particular parts of the brain would light up. This was found out to be what we call the default mode network, and it is located in particular parts of the brain, including the dorsal medial prefrontal cortex, the ventral medial prefrontal cortex, and parts of the parietal lobes. It's going to be symmetric and bilateral, so you can see these are the portions of the brain that are activated in the default mode network. Now, what does this do? The default mode network is actually involved in self-reflection, self-referential introspective thoughts or self-consciousness, mind wandering, and processing of episodic memory or recollection of past memory. So it's in those states when you feel that you are alone, you're at rest, and you're thinking about things in your life. You're thinking about yourself, maybe you're self-critical. These are the times when the default mode network is activated. And this is going to be important when we talk about some of the effects we're going to mention here in a moment. Now, what researchers found was that patients who consume coffee and in the group of patients who consumed caffeine-infused hot water, so this means that these both have caffeine in common, there was a decrease in posterior default mode network activity. So the posterior portion of this network was suppressed or decreased 30 minutes after consuming a caffeinated beverage. What this perhaps means is that patients who have consumed caffeine are going from a state of self-reference to a state of potential activity that they have to do 
outside of themselves. So it is a change from internal focusing to external focusing. But what was more interesting was the effect of coffee itself. So these effects were not found in the caffeine-infused hot water group. Coffee itself seemed to lead to multiple other brain changes. One of them include decreased connection between the prefrontal cortex and motor and somatosensory cortices. Another common brain activation that was found in coffee users was increased visual cortex activity. And another effect was increased activity of the right executive control network, which is located in the right prefrontal cortex. So all of these effects are interesting. These were only found, again, in the coffee group 30 minutes after consumption of coffee. Some of these were thought to be related to differences in motor control. With regards to the visual cortex activity, this may be related to improved visual imagery. And with regards to the increased right executive control network, this is a very interesting finding. This part of the brain is involved in working memory and goal-directed behavior and cognitive control. So not only does the caffeine itself seem to change from a default mode state to a more active task focused state, but also the activation of this part of the brain is likely involved in improved goal-directed behavior or a focusing on certain goal-directed behavior. So coffee use seems to play multiple roles that are both interesting and important as well. However, it's also important to note the fact that there are certain limitations with regards to the study. This study had a very small sample size. There is also no non-coffee control group. There is no decaffeinated coffee group to rule out potential placebo effects from coffee consumption. And the brain activity was only measured during a resting state. So, so again, these are the study limitations, but again, some interesting findings from this study. Please check out my lesson on coffee health benefits and risks. And if you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.